In this video, I want to start talking about the fundamental theorems of vector calculus. Um, you may recall from your single variable calculus, the fundamental theorem of calculus was the one that told you how you can integrate the derivative of a function, right? The integral of the derivative of a function is just going to be the function itself. So it tells you how to do uh, uh, integrals by doing antiderivatives. So the gradient theorem is a generaliz generalization of the fundamental theorem of calculus to uh, uh, vector calculus, to, uh, cal to calculus of several variables. So let me see if I can uh, convince you how this works. So remember, if we have a scalar field, I'll call it here phi. So we have a scalar field phi. If we take the differential of phi, we can use the gradient to do that. That's the gradient of phi dot dr. Okay? So the change in phi is the gradient of phi dot dr. So let's look at a line integral of this function. Um, so I want to integrate around some curve. So let's have some, some curve, call that a curve C, right? And then um, some origin somewhere. So we have some origin of our coordinate system. So the starting point has some position vector. So let's call that R1. And the ending point has some position vector. I don't think I can draw a straight line here, but I'll try my best. So that one will be R2. Um, so let's integrate this uh, gradient dot dr. So the integral along this curve C of del phi dot dr. Well, this is just the change in phi. So this is the integral along the curve C of d phi. Okay, and that's easy to integrate. That's just the change in phi. So that's phi at the um, top, which would be position vector r2, minus phi at the bottom, which is position vector r1. Okay? So this is a fundamental theorem in that it tells us that we can do this line integral of a gradient of a function dot dr by just knowing the value of the function itself at the endpoints of the curve, just like the fundamental theorem of single variable calculus, except now that we're in uh, more than one dimension. Okay, uh, there's an important consequence of this. The integral of del phi dot dr along a curve then just depends on the value of phi at the endpoints of the curve. So if the endpoints are at the same point in space, in other words, we're integrating over a closed curve of del phi dot dr, then the difference in phi at the starting point and the endpoint will be zero because the starting point and the end point are the same. Okay, uh, this is the basic theory. Let's try and then uh, work an example. So the problem I want to solve using the gradient theorem is to compute the line integral of the position vector r equals xi plus yj in the xy plane from the origin to the point 1, 1. Uh, this is uh, exactly the same problem we solved uh, when we did the example for line integrals. I did two paths. I did um, along the x-axis and then in the direction of the y-axis. And then I did the direct path. And we got the same answer both ways. And it turns out because it's independent of path. So how do we apply the gradient theorem to show that the solution here is independent of the path? Uh, we're doing an integral of r dot dr. 
So we need to write r in terms of the gradient of some function. So I want to write r equals the uh, gradient of some function, right? So that means we're writing that as d phi dx times i plus d phi dy times j. Uh, how do we get d phi dx equal to x and d phi dy equal to y? Well, the derivative of one half x squared is x. The derivative of uh, one half y squared is y. So we should be able to add these. So I can write this then as the gradient of one half then of x squared plus y squared, right? So here d phi dx is x and d phi dy is y. Okay, so now we have r is written as a gradient. So I can write with computing the line integral of r. So we're computing the integral along this curve of r dot dr, right? And that will, because r then is written as the gradient, that's the integral along the curve of the gradient dot dr. Then we can use the, um, the gradient theorem. So this is just the, um, the value of phi, um, which some sometimes it's called the potential, the value of the potential at the uh, end point minus the value at the starting point. So that's equal to the potential one half uh, x squared plus y squared evaluated then um, at the uh, end point then which will be one one minus the value at the starting point which is zero zero. So x equals one, y equals one minus the value at x equals zero, y equals zero. So the lower limit will, will just be zero. The upper limit then is one half one plus one or one half times two. So that gives us the value of one, which if you look back at your notes, that's the same value we computed for this line integral along two different paths. Okay, so let me review. The gradient theorem is the closest to the fundamental theorem of calculus in single variable calculus. It tells us that we can integrate the gradient of a function dot dr along some path, along some curve c. And then uh, if the uh, integrand is del phi dot dr, then this will just result in the value of phi at the end point of the path minus the value of phi at the starting point. <clears throat> because if the end point is the same as the starting point, the curve is a closed curve, so the integral of del phi dot dr around a closed curve will be zero. Uh, this gives us a quick method of computing a line integral as long as we can write the integrand in terms of the gradient of a function, then these type of integrals become uh, very, very easy. What mathematicians like to say, trivial. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.